Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks. In this video, we're going to take a look at natural language processing. In particular, we're going to use Spacey, Keras, and word to vec together. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. Previously, we did text generation where we looked at Treasure Island and we got the neural network to generate its own pirate stories. We're going to continue with this, but this time we're going to use word level text generation. Previously, we used character level text generation. Now, there's much debate as far as which of these two you should use. I tend to prefer generating at the character level and going truly end to end with the neural network, letting it figure out grammar and letting it figure out sentence structure, not really doing a lot of feature engineering on nouns and verbs and that sort of thing. But you can certainly do word level. And if you do word level, then it might be useful to provide additional features to let it know if it's dealing with a noun or a verb or other things. We won't get quite that complicated with this example, but I'll show you how we can use this to generate text at a word by word level. Is this is what we use for captioning we were generating at the word level although you can certainly do captioning at the character level as well so here i imported the packages and libraries that i need both for spacey and for keras i'm getting the treasure island text just like i did before and now i am dealing with spacey so i am going to use spacey now to do the tokenization to break the treasure island text apart so that i have it by individual words now when we did character level encoding we didn't have to do this Tokenization was handled by the neural network. It learned what spaces were and it learned how to break the words up. Here, since we're doing word by word, we need to do that actual tokenization and spacey is what does it for us. So we're essentially looping through all of the tokens. So these are all of the words that it finds. This is just code, this first line. This is a pretty useful line. This reduces the characters to just characters in the ASCII code 0 to 127. So this ensures that you are dealing just with ASCII characters in those words. So that strips out a lot of the extra junk characters, like this copyright symbol and this weird A. That removes those from your words. Then we also strip off any white space because once you remove some of these. There might be white space now that was embedded in there. We make sure that the tokens are not digits and that they're not URLs, emails, or other things like that. Now, you might want to handle these, but for this simple example, we're simply stripping them. Now, in the character by character, we just let them pass it in. And interestingly, the neural network would learn to generate URLs and email addresses and other things like like that. Total number of words we had when we did that is 6,421. We print out some of these. Now some of these are numbers, that's a Roman numeral, but we'll just go ahead and let it go in. That won't necessarily hurt anything. We're creating two lookups here, a word to index. So this would take a word like alone and convert it into a index. Now if you want to make these more consistent, you might want to sort these because then the indexes are going to always be the same. So for production situations, you need to think about that to make sure that these indexes are truly staying the same. Otherwise, if you train your neural network and you change what these indexes are, it's not going to work at all. Then we tokenize the text. That basically goes and takes the original Treasure Island text and replaces each word with the index number. So now it's more ready to be fed into something like an embedding layer or other text translation input. We're going to now, this is just like what we did in characters, except we're creating sequences of words, not sequences of characters. So this is essentially the same code. We're dealing with word sequences of up to six words. Step just means that we move forward three words each time. Otherwise, we would have a lot of a lot of redundancy in here because if if the word if the sentence is this is a test, the first sequence is going to be this is a the next sequence you would move forward three three words. So you wouldn't immediately start with the second second word. The smaller you make this number, the more of repetition that you have. And then we see what these sequences look like, or at least the first five. So these are the sequences that we're training on. We're training the neural network. If you have this word, this word, this word, this word, this word, and this word, then what is the next word? Then we vectorize it. This is essentially just changing this into numpy arrays so that we can 
actually train the neural network with it. This is exactly the same as from the character level encoding that we did, but it is really just building these up sort of one by one and then also building the Y so that we have the dummy variables coming out on the Y side so that we can predict it because we are using dummy variables. So this is the X shape. This makes it very evident how we're encoding this. So the X shape is essentially, we have 32,005 sequences that we generated. The maximum sequence size is six. And then we have this many values because we have dummy variables coming in essentially. We have a dummy variable for each of these six. So this is this is really a lot of data that we've pre-generated. This is where using an embedding layer could make this more efficient, but it fits into RAM, so I'm largely happy with it. The Y is similar. We don't have the six here because we're not predicting sequences. We're just predicting the next character. So we have the same number of rows, but now we have these dummy variables that tell us which of those 6,400 words it's actually going to be. And you can see what the dummies look like here, essentially. We're creating a very small, simple LSTM. It has 128 neurons in its layer. We're going to optimize with RMS prop. Again, keeping it similar to the example that I pulled in from the character encoding. Now, this is not a formal example from Kira's. I just modified the, the previous example from Kira's for the LSTM generation. I just modified this to actually work with words instead of characters. We print a summary. It's got like 4 million weights that we're training on. This is the sample function. This is exactly like the character-based one. We're essentially doing a softmax function where the temperature determines how conservative it's going to be in terms of the, the sentences, how willing it is to take risks. So you get more creative with that as a higher number, but more error prone with it as a lower number. And this is essentially a softmax, essentially ensuring that the probabilities of all of those 6,6400 words that are in the vocabulary that's trying to predict for the next word, that the probabilities of each of those do sum to one because they're probabilities, because we're going to take essentially the highest one and that is what we're going to predict as the next word. This is very similar to the previous example. We're calling this on epoch end and we're essentially generating some text on each of these iterations as it goes through training. And we can see that the text that it's generating gets better and better and better. We're going to generate 100 words for each of these. We're going to build up the input sequence. So we're going to randomly sample six or however big that input vector was for the sequence. I think it was six words if memory serves. Yeah, Axlin was six. So we're sampling groups of six words and we begin training. We'll scroll down. Now this is a lot, this was training for a while. This is why I'm not running these for the video. So it would take quite a while. So the temperature, this is a pretty conservative temperature and this is well into the training. You can see the pirate story that it's inventing. Israel, all ourselves sunk pieces. It replied towards make me about among business. Thus, Morgan News Davy in meant return. I'm not seeing really any grammatical errors, so that's really kind of cool. Another thing that it's doing that I just find fascinating is my tokenizer. I probably didn't spend enough time on the tokenizer, but it's taking the I and ill. Those are two different words in the vocabulary. That's why there's a space in here because we're putting the spaces in. It doesn't know what spaces are, but it figures out that usually after an I, It'll be ill or it'll be s. It's not like tacking this apostrophe s onto fell or something like this. It really is truly figuring out the sentence structure. And that's really, really cool and where natural language processing has really, really benefited from some of the deep learning technologies. So this is how you would do that same text generator at the word level. The word level, I think, out of the box, without a lot of effort trying to optimize, does produce very realistic words and sentence structure and believable text as far as pirate stories. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to look deeper into natural language processing with Kira's and look at embedding layers. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.